We've been through tough times before. We'll get through this. We're here for you, doing whatever it takes. We're coming back, stronger than ever, like nobody's business. Coming up on this edition of Like Nobody's Business, we are here at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center, the practice stadium for the Las Vegas Raiders. Today, you're not going to want to miss the show because we're talking to President Mark Bidane. He's going to talk about his leadership skills, what he looks for in a team and the players, and how that relates to your business. That's all next on Like Nobody's Business. It is so exciting to be here today at the Las Vegas Raiders headquarters and the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center in Henderson, the new home of the Las Vegas Raiders. We have two amazing guests today, the president of the Las Vegas Raiders, Mark Bedane, and our good friend from the Vegas Chamber of Commerce, Mary Beth Seawall. Now, before we kick off our conversation with Mark, Mary Beth, how amazing is it to say those and hear those words, Las Vegas Raiders? It is absolutely unreal. I am so excited to have the Las Vegas Raiders here in, in what has become my hometown. It's gonna be great for business. It's just so exciting to have Mark and the team here. It's really galvanizing everybody and getting people excited. So um, I'm just so thrilled though too to be a partner with the Henderson Chamber of Commerce. Scott Muellrath and his team has, have done a wonderful job putting this series together, the comeback. Um, we wanna thank our, our sponsors as well. Um, United Healthcare, uh, Health Plan of Nevada, Las Vegas Raiders, of course, and uh, Wells Fargo. And the College of Southern Nevada. And it's also part of the business information network that we've put together as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's been a great resource for us to be able to get information and resources out to the business uh, community here in Southern Nevada and the whole state. Thank you for being a part of this. We love these conversations. There is so much that we can learn from sports coming into business. Uh, Mark, a lot of leaders are going through some challenges right now, some challenging times. And I think leaders at all levels go through periods in, where they're, in their careers where they probably look back and go, how did we get through that? But if we look at your career, really over the past eight or nine years with the franchise, you're already running an NFL franchise. You're looking to relocate. You're working with Los Angeles. Then you start working with Las Vegas. It becomes official. You're building a stadium. You're building a practice facility, which by the way, if you hear some construction, it's still, it is literally under construction right now. And we do not complain when things are under construction in Las Vegas. And so you're getting ready for the move and then the virus hits. How have you and your team just kept moving forward? You referenced this has been about an eight-year process. So the organization's really been in a transition mode for a long time, and you learn a lot about your people during those times of adversity and, and how they handle those types of transitions. So as you mentioned, we were working on, on solving the stadium issue for the organization for a while. Uh, then we went into the Los Angeles process. We learned a lot in that one year, and then Las Vegas really came out of nowhere. When you actually start to tell the story of, of how the idea went from inception to being about 44 days away from completion, and it was done in four and a half years, it's unprecedented. It's really something that I don't think we'll ever see in our sport or maybe any sport in terms of how this community, um, as you said, galvanized around this project and really turned it into a reality and did it very quickly. Uh, the organization is made up of very talented people, some of which have been with us for decades and some have been with us for a couple of weeks. Uh, but they've all come in with the right mentality. They all understand the importance of this project. They all understand the importance of the project both before and after the virus really hit and what it's gonna mean now from an economic catalyst, from an economic stimulus standpoint to bring people back to Las Vegas to provide that, that tourism boost and the numbers are gonna justify it. So it's a good example of a public-private partnership and, it, and it's working. How have you grown as a leader during that time? You really, you, you, you learn a lot about uh, your people and you learn who you can trust and you can learn who, who can really rise to the occasion in, in times like this. And I knew we had really good people there. They just needed an opportunity to show it. And you've seen it in the community. You've seen it uh, with the, the project itself. You've seen the, the, the stadium come to life and, and this facility come to life and they're even better looking than the renderings. And uh, you, you, you've just, 
you learn to trust the people that, that you've grown up with in some cases or the ones that uh, you've just gotten to know and, and rely on them to do the job that you set out for them to accomplish and, and they've delivered. Mary Beth started talking about the impact on the community in your first two comments, the community, the community. What role does sports play in a community? Starts when you're a kid. It's one of the first activities you do outside of your family. You go to school, you play sports. So it's really the first time you learn teamwork and the first time you learn uh, how to get along with others, sometimes well, sometimes not so well. Uh, and then it becomes uh, a part of a community's infrastructure and a part of a community's identity. So there's only 30 cities that have NFL teams and Las Vegas is now one of them. That's a big deal. Uh, you saw what happened when, when the hockey team came here and you saw how excited this community was and, and what it meant and, and what it did not just locally, but what it did nationally and internationally was really the story of, of, of the year, uh, their first season. And we have that same opportunity here with the opening of this stadium. Uh, I'm obviously biased, but it's the most beautiful building in the world. It's not even close. And you look at it in the landscape of the skyline and what a beautiful addition it is to Las Vegas skyline, and then what it's gonna mean for this community to have an NFL team, both for the local community and for the tourism that it's gonna bring here. Uh, and it's a great addition. How about, same to you, what, what role does sports play? Well, I think sports plays an amazing role in the business community. Like I said, you guys are gonna galvanize this place. They're already rallying around the team. They're just so excited. And I think the economic impact is what is so exciting to the Vegas Chamber and our members because not only will it impact tourism, you know, I sit on the LVCVA board and so we talk about heads and beds a lot, but it's really going to impact those smaller businesses that will benefit from all the tourism and all the new folks coming to town just to see the Las Vegas Raiders. And so the economic impact on the little mom and pop stores that normally wouldn't have that type of exposure, now they're gonna get that because of the Las Vegas Raiders. Has anything surprised you about working with those in Las Vegas, in Henderson, in the state of Nevada? Uh, we've explained that this is a get to yes town and they saw it themselves when we were working on the plans for the draft, which ultimately had to get rescheduled. That was some of the feedback we got from the NFL events team is that this is very refreshing. You've got a group of people that instead of coming up with challenges, they're saying, well, here's how we get around that. Here's what we can do this. This is what we've done for that event. And they've been through it. So that large scale event mentality that exists here uh, blends really well with the large scale event mentality of NFL games, Raider games, NFL events, all the other championship events you mentioned and that we're gonna bring here. Uh, this city's just ready for it. This city is built for it. This city has the infrastructure, just needed the stadium as that last piece in order to attract all of those events. So speaking of infrastructure and stadiums, we're sitting in a world-class stadium here. We've got a little construction noise going on. You've got Allegiant, Allegiant Stadium, of course. How do these facilities lend themselves to the sports business aspect? Well, it starts with your customers and your employees. So how do you want to treat your employees? Where do you want them to work? You want them to have the best facilities so that you can then turn around and present the best product to your customers. So if you start here, uh, at the headquarters in the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center, you're talking about the premier facility in the league. And then you start talking about the business aspect of it and what that means for your customers. You then talk about Allegiant Stadium. And the goal is to provide the best customer experience, the best game day experience in the league, the best game day experience in the world. Again, going back to Las Vegas, this is the entertainment capital of the world. Uh, and they know hospitality. And so we're gonna be able to, to merge that and bring that experience into Allegiant. Mary Beth, the Vegas Chamber played a major role in making the stadium a reality, and Allegiant Stadium is an absolute game changer for Las Vegas. From a business perspective, what are the ways it'll impact the city? Well, you're right, DJ. It's a total game changer for not only our culture in Las Vegas, for business, the economy, um, for tourism. Uh, and kind of like we said before, it's going to really supercharge the economy in Las Vegas. And right now at a time when we need, we need heroes from sports. You know, we look to heroes, we look to coaches and CEOs of companies like Mark and, and the athletes. And, and I think now will be a good time to really supercharge the economy and to, um, to really help people kind of find some hope again. So it'll be great for the culture, great for our souls. How do you lead during this time of uncertainty? You just have to inform people of what's going on. Uh, the uncertainty can breed discontent. 
So you want to make sure they have the most up-to-date information for what you think may happen or what you think may not happen. And this is a good group of people that have been through it for uh, a number of years and they are adaptable and they're ready for the challenges. And when we have answers, we'll, uh, we'll put together the right plan for whatever uh, those factors that are out of control dictate to us. And uh, I'm excited about the season. I'm obviously uh, waiting for some answers the way you are, but I think the NFL will do the right thing. Uh, and I'm looking forward to opening that stadium. Do you have any final words of encouragement to the business leaders across the state of Nevada? It's a pretty resilient town, a pretty resilient state. And what we've seen, they should be really, really proud of. Uh, and, I, and, and it started well before we got here, but I think the, the growth of, of Las Vegas and the diversity of Las Vegas and the diversity of Northern Nevada and, and the companies that are coming here, they're starting to see what this state really has to offer. Uh, and we've had a chance to see it and work with it. So while I know it's tough right now and I know we're gonna have some really tough decisions as a state to get through, we'll be a part of bringing uh, some hope and, and some economic stimulus to the state. Uh, it'll come back. This place has done it before. You've seen it. You've been here your whole life, you said. So you've seen it multiple times. You've seen it. Uh, we've seen it in a short amount of time, and we'll do it again. And we're so glad you're here. Mary Beth, any, anything that you want our business leaders to know? Well, I think Mark hit the nail on the head. You know, um, as you look at what's, ha what's happened, we look at mistakes or we look at problems and challenges that we've had. Like in sports, you have to shake it off. You just have to shake it off and try to strategize, do your best to, to look at, learn your lessons from the past and then strategize for the future and make your plan and work the plan. This is the story of two businesses. Andy made a lemonade stand and hoped people would come. Jill did too, but she chose a team to get the word out about her lemonade stand. Jill learned early that advertising with the right team gets the best results. At Cox Media, we do this every day, helping your business grow to meet its potential. With our marketing expertise, Cox Media is your partner for advertising success. Don't let your business get left behind. Let's grow your business together. Contact Cox Media today. I'm Mary Beth Seewald, President and CEO of the Vegas Chamber, and we're here today on Like Nobody's Business. I'm so excited today to introduce our guest, Chief Jonathan Alvarez. He's the CEO and co-founder of Protective Force International, a leader in the security industry. Jonathan, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Mary Beth, for having us. It's an honor to be here with the Chamber. I appreciate it. And today we're not wearing our face coverings, but we are definitely social distancing. Boom. So our, our six feet apart, but um, we're just so happy to have you here, and we're so thrilled to have you as a proud President's Club member of the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, ma'am. It's an honor to be that as well. Uh, we get to network with everyone, uh, who's anyone here in the Vegas uh, area with being a President's Club member, and get to interact with you know, yourself and your team members who are fantastic. Uh, well, thank you. Tell us, Jonathan, um, Chief Jonathan Alvarez, tell us about Protective Force International. What is it you actually do? So Protective Forces International, PFI for short, um, essentially we are a higher standard security company uh, headquartered out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So we offer armed services, unarmed services, canine uh, officers, as well as mobile patrols, um, as all the way up to executive protection. I mean, we do all under the sun when it comes to the security industry, and we're very excited to be uh, a leader in this industry out here. And you are a leader. I know that you've been, uh, you know, unlike some companies who their businesses, unfortunately, have really suffered during this time. Protective Force International has actually grown by leaps and bounds. Tell us about that. Absolutely. When we started the chamber, actually, we had about 20 to 30 officers. We're about 200 officers now uh, strong. We got a numerous amount of canine officers, a fleet of vehicles that are patrolling neighborhoods, HOAs, retail shopping centers. So in the times and the struggles that have been going on with unfortunately businesses have been closing, making them you know, a little bit more vulnerable to crime, uh, people have been contracting us and business almost has tripled during this COVID period, which allows us also to provide great paying jobs um, to our Las Vegas community. So on the one hand, it's a challenge for the community because um, in other words, we, we've needed you <clears throat> for reasons that have been very challenging for a lot of people and a lot of businesses. But on the other hand, 
you're providing an amazing service to the community by keeping people safe, keeping their businesses safe, and employing a lot of people. Yes, uh, we strive in what we say as community first uh, throughout the department. Um, we have officers coming in on their off days, dressing in their uniforms to hand out food with Metro. Um, we had actually an officer yesterday um, buy a soccer ball for some children who were playing with some rocks out in the community, bought them a soccer ball and played soccer with them out there. So it was really, really nice to get these phone calls and letters from the community um, highlighting officers that, that we have within the range. So it sounds like the people really make a difference at PFI. Um, is that one of the things uh, that you would say sets, um, sets your company apart from others? Absolutely. So we have a pretty stringent hiring process. And what we do is uh, vet them. Uh, and then officers or candidates essentially at the time go through uh, multiple academies about a uh, week long that we have right now, which you know trains them everything from ethics, how to dress in a uniform, their tools and equipments. They get certified in defensive tactics, defensive tools. Uh, all the way up to firearms qualifications. So we ensure that when we set a security officer out in the community, they know what they, they have and they know what they can use um, and they know the laws uh, specifically on what they can and can't do. Tell us kind of what are some of the next new things on the horizon for Protective Force International? Absolutely, so uh, we stood up our uh, nonprofit. So it's Protective Force International Community Development Center, PFI CDC for short. So um, what our goal is there is to assist veterans and the community with resources uh, for jobs within the security industry. We know that we have a lot of veterans with the base right next door um, that come out and you know sometimes veterans default on security jobs while they take that next step. So we wanna be that step. If they decide to stay with us, that's fantastic. And if they don't move on to bigger and better things, then we encourage that as well. Well, that's wonderful. I know, you know, um, the chamber is involved with so many nonprofits and foundations and things like that. So I'm sure the chamber will be engaged with you as well. Absolutely. You know, during this time, Chief Alvarez, it's been so difficult with COVID-19 and so forth. So how does your vision and your vision tie into the community and tie into what's happening right now with COVID-19? So our vision ties in because we essentially want to be the liaison to our residents within the community and the law enforcement aspect. So while law enforcement takes care of true crimes and true emergencies, we want to be that stepping stone. So if the community needs something, we are here for them. The smaller things that we can handle within our apartment complexes and residential areas and shopping centers. Uh, along with that, we have opened our nonprofit, which is uh, Protective Force International CDC. And CDC stands for Community Development Corporation. So within that aspect, we are our mission on there is to provide resources to veterans and uh, others in the community for housing, training, scholarships, um, job training, and we want to provide them with equipment so they can actually use BFI and CDC as their stepping stone to either a career or if they want to stay with us, that's great as well. So not only do you provide these great security services to the community, but now you have your nonprofit and you're helping veterans as well. How great is that? It's fantastic. I mean, we started with like $200 in a laptop and here we are at this just monster within the Las Vegas area. And we've become a pillar in not only our industry, but every industry that we get contracted for, whether it's again, retail security or uh, you know residential malls, anything like that. We actually embed ourselves with the employees, with the management, with the residents, just to ensure that there's that extra level of protection so they know that the right company is with them. And I know with the state of the economy right now, so many people are you know out of a job, they're looking for employment and things like that. And, and we talked about how you've been increasing hiring, but you're, going to be even hiring more, right? Yes, actually, in the very near future, we're obtaining multiple contracts. So we want everyone to know that, you know, we are hiring. Uh, we're consistently hiring. Uh, qualifications are, uh, are a little stringent sometimes for some of these contracts. But again, we want everyone to apply who's fully qualified. We want to give others who maybe not even have security experience, maybe a chance on a smaller contract to gain that experience and really mentor somebody within the in the industry and again we provide them with the training paid training our officers uh, have full benefits health care medical dental life insurance um, we pay them throughout the whole time that they have 
uh, certifications. So, I mean, we are very, very, very different than a lot of the organizations. But again, we, we pride ourselves with the standard of officers that we have. How long is a typical training uh, time frame for, so like, for example, I don't have any law enforcement background. I'm, I'm somewhat fit, but you know, you, so what are some of the requirements that you do have? And then how long is the training? Sure, so we have actually different levels of that. So we have unarmed security officers and they go through a week long, you know, training course in our, which we call our basic academy. Our armed officers is that next step. So once you have a certain time within the organization as an unarmed officer, you can then qualify and petition to be a armed officer. You get a nice signature and a piece of paper. You take your armed class. We then put you through more training for an armed officer. And then if you want to take that next level, we can branch you off into a canine officer, which if we have openings, or actually our emergency security team, which is our rapid response team for our larger events, contracts, things of that nature that require a more trained individual. So it really all depends on how far you, Mary, want to take your career. And maybe one day you can come to ride along with us. And maybe. Oh, I would love to. Yes. Uh, I would love to do that. So on that note, um, you know, I know there's a lot of camaraderie when when we go through training like this with people or our lives are, you know, in each other's hands and things like that. What's it like to work at PFI? So the greatest part about PFI is our culture and what we try and establish is a culture of family and teamwork. But at the same time, we're so big that it's very sometimes difficult to get to get out and reach every single officer. So that's why we rely on our management. I have a, an amazing management team that truly cares for each one of their officers, all the way from a major down to a lieutenant, to a captain, to the sergeants, to the corporals, and each and every one know what their officers are doing and they know their family, they know if any issues are going on. So we truly want to create that culture where we still become a large organization, you know, larger than what we are now, but also have those family values that we're still able to go barbecue together as a group or, you know, a shift gets to go and do a, a special event together. So that's what we want to continue. Wow, that sounds great. I, I can't imagine that just about anyone would want to be part of a family like that at PFI. How do you recommend that people go about um, uh, applying or interviewing at PFI? So uh, we encourage them to go to our website. So it's www.protectiveforceintl.com. It's international abbreviated. Um, and then there's a careers tab there that they can go and uh, ultimately contact one of the hiring captains through there. Um, we also have job uh, openings throughout like Indeed and different job markets that are like that. And uh, if you have a question, our social media is a great way to get in contact with us. We have a Facebook, a LinkedIn, an Instagram. So, and there you can actually truly see how we impact the community where we do multiple events and we have pictures and there's so many pictures of different officers. So you get to see the true diverse organization of what we have and how it's making waves within this Nevada community. Well, Chief Jonathan Alvarez with Protective Force International, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for all you've done for our community and thank you for being a great, great President's Club member of the Vegas Chamber. Thank you, Mary Beth, my pleasure. All right, we'll be back right after this. Remember old Vegas where the customer was king? The Casa Blanca and Mesquite is just like Vegas used to be. Play over 40 of your favorite table games. Play over 800 slot and video poker machines and get comps, free play, and cash back. Get away and play two 18-hole championship golf courses. Or pamper yourself in our full-service salon and unwind in our world-class spa. Now this is my kind of getaway. Reserve your $99 golf or spa getaway today. It's just like Vegas used to be. I know the impacts of decision will reach far and wide into the homes and lives of our Nevada families. This was not an easy decision to make. It's been more than one month since hotels and casinos here on the Las Vegas Strip have been boarded up due to the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 hit us all hard. It hit Vegas businesses hard too, but through it all, the Vegas Chamber has been right here with you, right here for you. We didn't just adapt to the new normal, we are driving it, delivering effective tools straight to businesses, connecting you directly to the resources you need to survive, thrive, and emerge even better than before. 
We created virtual events you literally couldn't afford to miss. Sisolak did not hold a press conference this week. He did, however, meet with the Vegas Chamber of Commerce virtually. The Vegas Chamber has done a remarkable job in being not just an advocate for their members, but being a resource for my office and my administration. Information is power. And at the Vegas Chamber, we empower you to thrive. During these few months, we've given away more than 300 free memberships to small businesses, organized more than 50 webinars with key decision makers. Tom Burns is chairman of the Vegas Chamber of Commerce. They need to know Las Vegas is safe and, and that they're going to be, their health is a major concern. We've worked relentlessly to deliver hope and opportunity, not just to our members, but to everyone. It was our leader, Mary Beth, that was at the helm that brought the community leaders together, the federal government together, as well as local government. For us to be able to come together, get what we need as far as information, and support one another with the help of the chamber. I know that I'm not alone. I know that I have an army of people who are ready to help, who want to help, who want to see me succeed. I think our primary focus probably needs to be on economic development right now. How do we get the businesses that are in Nevada back open and running? So whatever we can do to help you. Our kids learn by being with one another. What makes sense um, for Nevada? As we get more robust testing, as we find out of antibody testing, it will help everyone. And now, as Nevada reopens, we'll continue to safely advocate for and cultivate the growth and prosperity of Las Vegas businesses. We have the potential of coming out of this crisis uh, more rapidly than most of our competitive markets. So stand tall, everyone. Be proud. Be Nevada proud. We're battle-born. We've been battle-tested. We realize that we have to pull ourselves out of this together, and we are. We've made it this far, and your Vegas Chamber is doing whatever it takes to guide our community into the future. Be the future. Join now. One of the best ways to protect yourself, businesses, and the economy is to wear a face covering much like this one. Reducing the number of COVID cases is the fastest way to get our economy back to normal. So do your part for Nevada. We recently launched a brand new program called Switch to Kindness. It's through a partnership with Switch and also the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department's foundation. It's a great way to infuse cash into our local businesses and also to buy a gift card and say thank you to those first responders who are working so hard. And it's all through this partnership with Switch, the Vegas Chamber, and the Las Vegas Metro Police Department's foundation. We're so excited about this partnership, so we hope you'll get online and join us at VegasChamber.com. That'll do it for us today. Thanks for watching, and from all of us at the Vegas Chamber, stay safe.